पाहि माम अभयंकर व्याघ्रचर्माबर धरा शंकरा चंद्रशेखरा गंगाधरा सुमनोहरा पाहि माम परमेश्वरा मृत्युंजय विश्वेश्वरा मृत्युंजय विश्वेश्वरा ओम नमो नारायणाय ओम नमो नारायणाय ओम नमो नारायणा In this session, we are going to take up the topic of divinizing action. If this question is asked, why do we perform action? What should be the answer? We all perform action for happiness. Yes or no? Yes. How come action leads to happiness? So we say, we perform action in order to fulfill our desires. 
and when the desires are fulfilled we are happy yes or no yes so we work hard then we get the desired object and then when the desire is fulfilled we are happy say for in this world everybody is busy doing something or the other and the purpose of action is only one happiness now the scriptures say are you sure that action will lead to happiness the scriptures say unintelligent action will only lead to bondage now in this philosophy work hard get the desired object be happy do you see any flaw <laughs> is there any flaw so no it's fine everybody is doing it therefore i am also doing it but when we come to the scriptures when we study the scriptures we come to know the flaw of this philosophy what is the flaw kruti mahau dadhau patana karanam phalam ashashvatam gati nirodhakam unless you come to satsang you will never know all this <laughs> everybody is busy scriptures say you are digging your own grave the scriptures say it will lead to bondage yatnyarthat karmano nyatra lokoyam karma bandhana it is called karma bandhana bandhana created by karma it is called karma bandhana but i don't see any bondage here okay now we will see what that bondage is so what is bondage bondage is that state of helplessness where we lose our freedom yes or no so bondage means a state of helplessness bondage means losing freedom how can my action bind me so the first one in the morning we have discussed this i perform action for a particular result so karma that karma leads to karma phala that karma phala gives me sukha and that sukha makes me attached to that thing i have raga and based on this raga again i perform karma so see the order karma karma phala sukha raga raga prerita karma <laughs> in this cycle what is happening to raga it is getting intensified so whenever i talk of raga understand dvesha also so in the process raga dvesha becomes very strong my vasanas become very strong so now can i say that i am getting bound by my raga dvesha you see the bondage there see many times physical bondage we are able to appreciate but not the psychological bondage physically somebody ties us to a pole yes i can understand it's a bondage because i am not able to physically move here and there there is a helplessness but there is something called psychological bondage i am stuck so at the mind level because of my intense likes and dislikes i am helpless anyone to whom you are attached to or anything to whom you are attached to you will find that mind is stuck there it's like a whirlpool you know the moment you think of that incident that person that thing suddenly the mind becomes helpless 
it gets caught in that whirlpool <sighs> gone mind is not available for anything else yes or no sometimes you hear people oh that person i can never forgive 20 years back he did this thing to me i can never forgive him and i can never forget what is happening now <laughs> you are polluting your present with the bitter memories of the past yes or no the present is gone peace of mind is gone everything gone this is called as bondage the inability to you to to apply the mind in the present because the mind is stuck either in the past or in the future this is called as bondage i am helpless i want the mind here but the mind is everywhere except here hmm? right so this is a bondage so whenever i perform action in order to fulfill my desires this is what happens the second bondage everything in this world is uncertain you just don't know whether you will get it or not you are trying for a desired object but that object i will get it or not there is no guarantee so what happens as i am striving for that object there is worry anxiety tension fear etc now is there anyone who loves worry and anxieties <laughs> no i don't want tension i don't want stress i don't want anxiety but it is coming and i am helplessly going through it are you able to see the helplessness there are you able to see the bondage there i don't want to be unhappy but i am helplessly unhappy i don't want stress and strain but i am helplessly stressed right so the mind is always there in the future will i get it or not will i get it or not will it happen or not see this is bondage right now karma karma phala again karma whatever karma phala you get in this world it is only limited yes or no yes why because karma is limited limited karma can give only limited karma phala are we happy with limited karma phala no so the moment karma phala is over again we do karma right so throughout kruti mahaudadho patana karanam bhagavan ramana maharshi says it is a kruti mahaudadhi ocean of karma why because every karma limited karma can give only limited result so therefore what i want is unlimited result because what i want is unlimited happiness i want this happiness to remain forever but my happiness is depend on karma phala but that is limited so therefore how do i try to make this sukha unlimited by doing unlimited karma are you able to see the bondage there <laughs> every karma is limited so i am going on adding limited karma to make it unlimited i am stuck in action hmm. bondage and now another major bondage what is it every karma will lead to karma phala if in this birth i don't get karma phala then i will have to take another birth in order to go through that karma phala punarapi jananam punarapi maranam repeated birth death now this is another bondage i am bound to this body i am bound to this world i am bound to repeated birth death when this satsang was going on in one place one elderly man got up and said so amji so what it's good to know coming back again and again to this world you can learn so many things you can enjoy so many things you can see so many things which you have never seen in your past birth it is a wonderful thing no 
what is the problem with repeated birth and death you are all satsangis so you should know what is the problem janma mrityu jara vyadhi dukham every time you are born we are not asking why you are born maybe because of your punya karma you are born but the point is once you are born whoever you are pain of birth you will have to undergo pain of death you will have to undergo then there is sufferings of old age then there is sufferings of disease all these things we have to go through isn't it so therefore in spirituality even taking birth is not considered a good thing so i am bound to this body so see the varieties of bondage i am bound to my vasanas i am bound to my likes and dislikes i am bound to worries and anxieties i am bound to a physical body and in that also how many mana apamana sukha dukha oh my god dwandwas i'm bound to dwandwas the pairs of opposites you see so therefore all these bondage because of whom because of what karma <laughs> my own actions so therefore to say that perform action get your desired object and be happy this equation is not right many times you get the desired object when your neighbor gets more you are jealous can you call it happiness <laughs> many times you don't get the desired object you are miserable even if you get it somebody has more again you are miserable and whatever you get it is limited it has to go per- impermanent again you are miserable how can you call it happiness right so this philosophy work hard and be happy work hard earn well and be happy this philosophy doesn't hold water for wise people right so naturally a question comes why am i miserable even though i am working hard in this world even though i have worked, very many times we find in this society the person has worked hard sincerely earned well children are well settled but still there is a sense of hollowness somewhere the person feels no i am experiencing some sense of you know unfulfillment so where are we going wrong you can't say this person is not working hard no very you know hard worker you can say workaholic rather <laughs> but still unhappy he has achieved everything all degrees worldly degrees name fame power position possession everything is there but still no sense of fulfillment what is the mistake the mistake the great just a mistake is he has forgotten god bas simple why god is so important god is the most important we are alive because of god first one our talents and abilities have come from god the resources around us it belongs to god everything has come from god and now you think while after performing hard work and getting whatever you want and totally forgetting god totally being ungrateful to god you can be happy impossible this is where karma yoga enters into picture it is not just karma it is karma yoga entire third chapter is dedicated for this how we must perform our action so that this action it will not be a cause of bondage but it becomes a cause of liberation this action is a double edged weapon 
What do you mean double edged weapon? If you handle it carelessly, it will harm you. And if you handle it carefully, it will liberate you. That's why this karma is called as double edged weapon. So, how should we perform our actions in such a way that there is material prosperity outside and there is spiritual evolution inside? How to make use of this action? That is the technique given in our scriptures. The third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Karma Yoga, deals with it. Right. Now, tell me all these techniques. Should we study after retirement or should we get this knowledge at a very young age? <laughs> after retirement, when everything is over. Eyes cannot see, ears cannot hear, legs cannot carry the body. In a corner this old man is lying down. Life is almost over and then we come to know, Oh, oh, I have taken a wrong road. <laughs> That's why we say Bhagavad Gita, this knowledge, at a very young age, we have to expose this knowledge to our children. You know, they think they know everything, they don't know anything. Hmm. They don't know anything. A little marks here, a little, you know, certificate there, some degree, they think they know everything. They have not yet begun life. According to scriptures. The term used for them is Mudha. Avidyaya mantare vartamana Swayam dhira panditam manyamana Dandramyamana pariyanti mudha Andhe naiva Niyamana yatha andha. <laughs> I hope you have understood. Avidyaya mantare vartamana. Remaining in complete darkness of ignorance. And what is their opinion about themselves? Swayam dhiraha. Panditam manyamana. We are dhira. Dhira means wise person. I am, I am learned, wise. Educated. I know everything. I know everything. I don't want any advice. I know. They call themselves Dhira, Pandita, etc. What do the scriptures call them? Mudha. <laughs> Their condition is Andhenaiva Niyamanaya Thanda. They are like the blind led by the blind. You just see the society you will find that this is absolutely true. Right. What is the purpose of life? Nobody knows. And the fellow who doesn't know, he is saying, I know it, come, follow me. <laughs> Where is he going? Towards hell. <laughs> Where is he taking everyone? Towards hell. <laughs> you understood? Hmm. Okay, coming back. So, karma, we have to be very careful with karma. So, actions can bind us. So, now look at our own life. Is there tension, worry, anxiety? Then that means I am bound. That's it. You can test yourself. You don't have to go to any lab. <laughs> Just close your eyes and sit. Is the mind wandering everywhere? Yes, this is bondage. I have no control over my mind. That is called as bondage. All kinds of negative emotions are there. That is called as bondage. Hmm? How did I get bound? My own unintelligent actions. Right. How to come out? Yes. Ishwararpitam nechayakritam chitta shodhakam mukti sadhakam. 
yes ishwar arpitam when actions are performed as a worship of the lord knowing fully well that oh lord this ability to act this ability to think this ability to operate the sense organs everything has come from you so therefore may this actions may my duties and responsibilities this very fulfillment let it be an offering unto you let this be my worship ishvara arpitam when such actions what will happen chitta shodhaka mind becomes pure and such a pure mind automatically gets what you call it becomes a prepared field to gain self knowledge so in karma yoga we have four important principles to keep in mind what are they number 1 kartavya nirvahanam perform your duties is the first one second one samyak aacharanam do it as best as you can samyak aacharanam third one ishvara arpana buddhi when you are performing this action offer it unto the lord and fourth one ishvara prasada buddhi when the results come receive the results as the prasad from the lord so these are the four important principles of karma yoga कर्तव्य निर्वहण सम्यक् आचरण ईश्वर अर्पण बुद्धि एंड देन ईश्वर प्रसाद बुद्धि बस सो फर्स्ट वन कर्तव्य निर्वहण डू योर ड्यूटी दैट्स ऑल व्हाट इज नीडेड इन कर्म योग यू डोंट हैव टू टेक द बर्डन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड अपॉन योर शोल्डर्स यू हैव ए लिटिल फैमिली टेक केयर ऑफ द फैमिली यू हैव सम जॉब डू इट वेल कर्तव्य निर्वहण वॉट एवर कर्तव्य मीज देर ड्यूटीज आर देर रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज आर डू इट नंबर वन हाउ यू शुड डू सम्यक आचरण एज बेस्ट एस यू कैन यू डोंट हैव टू बी नंबर वन इन द वर्ल्ड नॉट ने एज बेस्ट एस यू कैन डू इट सम्यक वेरी वेल एंड द थर्ड वन वॉट इज द थर्ड वन ईश्वर arpana buddhi when you are doing it be aware of this fact that i am able to do this duty because i am alive and this life belongs to him it's his gift to me life is his gift to me he is the one who is keeping this body alive there are millions of factors necessary to keep this body alive and all these millions of factors food water clothing temperature all those things he is the one who is taking care therefore this life belongs to him and all those abilities and talents also belong to him with this feeling bhagwan tera tujhko arpan this life is yours talents are yours resources are yours instruments are yours this ambience is yours environment is yours everything is yours therefore bhagwan this is my puja unto you this is my worship beautifully i do as best as i can i do and then say bhagwan because of your grace it happened there is no kartrutva bhava bhagwan inspiration to do this act also has come from me the most important thing is inspiration if i want to do anything what is the first thing inspiration where is it coming i don't know so therefore i say bhagwan you inspired me therefore i am doing this so everything has come from you therefore this action belongs to you this is my worship unto you this is called as ishvara arpana buddhi and then the last one now you have performed action results have to come what is your attitude prasada whatever comes cheerful acceptance of the results of these action this results you are the giver karturatnyaya prapyate phalam is it karturatnyaya phalam prapyate 
by his command this result is coming in his omniscience in his infinite knowledge he has given me this result so i accept it without complaining without grumbling right such a karma yogi now see the earlier defects and see whether these defects will affect this person or not will there be any intense raga dvesha for this person karma yogi no why he is doing it because it is his duty not because he likes it in fact he will do only that which the lord likes so whatever he does he doesn't ask this question do i like or not no he will my bhagwan be pleased with this then i will do it so what is that which bhagwan likes he wants us to walk the path of righteousness he wants us to walk the path of dharma so every time i am taking adharma there is a conscience prick and the conscience prick is the indication that my creator is not happy with me so this karma yogi stops it whenever i do dharmic action there is joy this joy is an indication that my creator is happy with me so this person is inspired to walk you see so actions are not based on likes and dislikes we can say actions are based on right and wrong based on dharma so therefore he is not bound by raga dvesha now the second defect worries and anxieties will it affect a karma yogi no why he is not doing for result he is doing only to please the lord as far as the result is concerned he knows whatever i am i deserve it will come i don't have to crave for it right so therefore there is no worry no anxiety and when he is performing action he doesn't say i am the doer i did it because of me things happen no kartrutva bhava is just an instrument right his joy is in pleasing the lord his joy is not in getting the result of those action and because he doesn't crave for result he need not be reborn <laughs> why are we reborn in order to get the result why is it that the result should come to you result should come to you because you crave for the result if you crave for the result you will have to take another embodiment to go through the result here this person is not craving for the result therefore there is clear detachment from karma and karma phala the point is he is not reborn because there is no desire for the result so see he is free from vasanas ragadveshas he is free from worries and anxieties and he becomes free from repeated birth death so now compare a karmi from a karma yogi who is a karmi karmi is a person who is performing action for the result while performing action a karmi is disturbed because of worries and anxieties what about a karma yogi peaceful mind after getting result a karma is disturbed why either he is too elated or too depressed <laughs> depending upon what he gets too much of elation also is a disturbance in spiritual language so throughout his life he remains disturbed what about a karma yogi while performing action also mind is peaceful after getting the result also mind is peaceful throughout the day he is at peace so what the seat of meditation what will be state peace the peace continues now with respect to the material gain who will get more a karma yogi or a karmi <laughs> karmi performs action with a disturbed mind full of worries and anxiety so naturally he will turn out an inferior action inferior action has to produce only inferior results what about a karma yogi his action will be superior because at a satvic state of mind he is performing action so the action will be the best such an action will give the best results so at the material level also 
karma yogi is at a higher advantage you see karmi disturbed mind <laughs> inferior material gain and end result bondage what about karma yogi peaceful state of mind free from all kinds of bondage materially prosperous and the very same karma helps him evolve spiritually see the huge difference between a karmi and a karma yogi an ocean of difference and you know there is another great benefit what is the benefit a karma yogi performs all actions to please the lord he does everything for the sake of the lord so now whatever resources he needs to perform the action who has to supply bhagwan has to supply just imagine just like a traffic police he has some problem there some problem in the traffic so he doesn't have the resources to handle that problem some fight or something so what will you do he informs the higher authority higher authority has greater power so with all the power the higher authority sends him to help this traffic police isn't it if that person also cannot handle he informs his higher authority that higher authority has a greater power finally if the police is not able to handle the army comes into picture yes or no <laughs> why because that traffic police he is doing the job of the government the central government so the entire country comes to protect that police there because he is doing his job in the same way when a person is performing action for the sake of the lord whatever he needs whether it is knowledge whether it is strength whether it is inspiration whether it is resources whether it is wealth who has to supply bhagwan has to supply that is the story of sundar kand hanuman ji feels it is bhagwan's work now i cannot jump this 800 miles no bhagwan has given me this responsibility so who has to empower me bhagwan has to empower me and he leaves there you are people say oh these are all exaggeration it is not exaggeration the only lesson we have to learn from this is if the lord has given you a responsibility he will also ensure that you fulfill the responsibility successfully this is the message how much ever big that responsibility may be the lord will empower you to succeed in fulfilling your duty this is the message hmm? right just imagine such an option is there in front of us you don't have to do something different keep doing what you're doing we have family responsibility we have professional responsibility be where you are don't have to do anything but just a change of attitude that's all i am not doing it for me i am doing it for the lord answer also should be clear why should i do it for the lord so whenever the intellect asks this question why should i do it for him i don't even know whether he is existing or not <laughs> when such questions come just pay attention your heart which is beating <laughs> these are some of the techniques you know to silence the logical critical intellect when such doubts arise how are you alive ask this question to the intellect you are alive because there is a heart which is beating isn't it what is your role in beating that heart you will find that the intellect has become silent the atheistic intellect pampered by the atheist of the society the intellect becomes silent what is our role in beating this heart double zero isn't it so always remember this i am a nobody i am somebody because of the lord 
I am nothing. I have nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. I can do nothing. If you remain in this level, your life will be full of peace. Don't say I am Brahman. <laughs> Little knowledge is a dangerous thing, they say, no? <laughs> Very dangerous. I might be Brahman, but at present I am not evolved enough to understand that state. At present I know only this much, I am nothing. This I know. <laughs> no, Swamiji, is it not a pessimistic philosophy? I am nothing, I know nothing. What is this? <laughs> is it not very pessimistic and you know? No. You must say, I am nothing and I can do nothing, but by God's grace I can do anything. This is the philosophy, it is not pessimistic. By God's grace I can do anything. And this is exactly what Hanumanji told Bhagavan Sri Ramachandra. Bhagavan, I am only a monkey. The only thing I know is to jump from one branch to another. Is all I know. It is because of your grace that I could cross over the ocean. It is because of your grace that the entire Lanka could be burnt. Everything because of your grace. As far as I am concerned, I am double zero. The whole of Sundar Kandi will find this. Hanumanji falls at the feet of Bhagavan. Bhagavan is praising Hanumanji, but that praise has no effect upon Hanumanji. It was very clear. Bhagavan, I am at dust at your holy feet. That's it. This is the this is the act with which a karma yogi functions. Absolutely no ego. have ego, to that extent you have problems in this world. As Pooja Gurudev used to say, greater the ego, greater the war. To the extent we can efface this ego, to that extent life will be smooth. To that extent you will find you are in harmony with creation. What is the proof that you are in harmony with creation? What is the proof? The proof is immense peace, intense peace, peace and clarity in thinking. Have you observed? The train is very clear which track to take, isn't it? (laughs) There are so many tracks running here and there. When you see the tracks, you are confused, but the train is not confused. It knows which track to take. In the same way, this world is very complex. The world is complex, body is complex, mind is complex, intellect is complex, everything is complex. But for a person who has surrendered to God, everything is clear. What he is supposed to do, how he is supposed to decide, what decision he is supposed to take, everything is clear. The moment the ego rules the heart, that's it, we are finished. So a karma yogi is constantly effacing his ego through his action. A bhakta is also doing the same thing. A jnani also is doing the same thing. A karma yogi is also doing the same thing. There are all different, different ways to efface the ego. And this is the only tapas we need to do in this world. Aham apetakam nijavibhanakam mahadidam tapo ramana vagiyam Ramana Maharshi says, this is the greatest tapas. What is the greatest tapas? Aham apetakam. Destroy this ego and allow the Lord to rule over you. Nijavibhanakam. Karma Yoga is nothing but this. So therefore, this is the technique to divinize our life, to divinize our action. So don't have to escape from the world, not necessary. Remain in the world. Face the challenges. Perform your duties. Remain wherever you are. That is the message of Bhagavad Gita actually. 
this whole message of bhagavad gita has not given in some ashram some peaceful place no in the midst of <laughs> battlefield by one grihastha to another grihastha <laughs> not by one sanyasi to another sanyasi no what is the message we are all having our own battles isn't it yes so spirituality is not something which is divorced from life no it is something to be practiced even while we are battling in this materialistic life it is something which can be practiced by everyone it is available hmm? is a message of bhagavad gita right so may we all benefit from this knowledge hmm? may we all divinize our action and evolve not only materially that is also important material prosperity is important and also at the same time spiritual evolution also is absolutely essential right the next session we will take up another topic what is the topic ha ah, dealing with life's challenges yes बिना ज्ञान का रे मनवा बिना ज्ञान का रे मनवा बिना ज्ञान बिना ध्येय अधूरा हरि चरण कमल कैसे पाओ बिना ज्ञान कहाँ रे मनवा बिना ज्ञान कहाँ काम क्रोध मद लोभ मोह मिल अहंकार है जीव का दुश्मन काम क्रोध मद लोभ मोह मिल अहंकार है जीव का दुश्मन भक्ति विनय से सेवा भाव से भक्ति विनय से सेवा भाव से जानो ये गुरु महिमा मनवा पहचानो ये गुरु महिमा मन पहचानो ये ज्ञान बिना ये ध्येय अधूरा हरि चरण कमल कैसे पाऊ हरि च
चरण बिना ज्ञान कहा मन बिना नित्य निरंतर अंतर्यामी हृदय विराजे मेरे स्वामी कैसे पाओ उस भगवान को कैसे पाओ उस भगवान को गुरु कृपा के बिना मन गुरु दया के बिना मन गुरु ज्ञान बिना ध्येय अधूरा हरि चरण कमल कैसे पाओ बिना ये ज्ञान कहा मन गुरु बिना ये ज्ञान कहा मन गुरु बिना ये ज्ञान कहा मन ओम सर्वे भवंत सुखी सर्वे संतु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यंत दुख भाव भवे असतो मंगमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा मृत गमय ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ